Welcome to the Go Dyslexia podcast, where dyslexia experts share strategies, technology, products, stories, and more. And now, your host, author, and personal trainer for the brain, Dr. Erica Warren. This episode of the Go Dyslexia video podcast is brought to you by GoodSensoryLearning.com, mindful and multisensory lessons and remedial tools for parents, teachers, and educational therapists. So I am so excited to have Beth Lawrence here with us today. And she is going to be telling us a little bit about an incredible project that she's been doing for a number of years that's kind of uh, finally come to fruition. And it's Infocabulary. And uh, this is by her company, Communication Aptitude. Correct. So Beth, um, Tell us a little bit about why you're a dyslexia expert. I'd love to. I am a speech language pathologist and have been for 23 years. Uh, In the last 15 years, I have had a private practice in the Baltimore, Maryland area. And my practice is almost exclusively students who have language disorders and uh, language-based learning disabilities, dyslexia, um, dysgraphia. So I've been working with this population for for quite a while. I'm Orton Gillingham trained, and uh, it's all about the multisensory, getting multisensory learning in for this population of kids. Absolutely. I love that term, multisensory learning. It's very Mm -hmm. key. I'm a speech language pathologist, which a lot of people think, you know, if you're not real familiar with all, you know, the various things that we can work on, um, we do a lot more than just working on uh, articulation with kids. So, um, you know, but it's fun to explain what I do that basically I take and I get the opportunity, the amazing um, joy of working with students who are not feeling good about themselves as learners. And just by tweaking some things, they feel right. like rock stars and they start being successful. So it's, it's an amazing career and, and it's a, a pleasure. I, I agree with you. And, um, and I, it sounds to me like you're having a shift very similar to what I'm having in my practice where I'm moving much more towards mindfulness. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's not just the IQ, but it's the EQ building. Uh, Absolutely. There's a lot of bullying going on and there's a lot of trauma. There's depression, there's anxiety, and we have to address that because if we don't address that, they can't learn. And and, and those emotions can be disabling. And then of course, you know, we've got the working memory piece, which is really, really important. (laughs) What is working memory made up of? Visualizations Mm -hmm. and your inner voice. Yep. And so uh, it's a lot of metacognition. Yes. And that's a lot of what I work on with students is giving them strategies. Um, and I know your, your audience as well. Um, it's all about strategies. It's not, it's not so much, you know, skill and drill, it, although that's part of it. Lots and lots of how can I hand over to this student tricks that I have so to enable them to be more metacognitively aware and, and um, help themselves. And, in, in the, you know, I, we won't be there on the next project they're working on. So if they have a, a, you know, toolbox that's full, it's just so empowering for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I I often tell my students, the young ones that I'm kind of like a magician (laughs) because, (laughs) because I'm teaching tricks. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Uh, And, and any way that we can make it fun and little shortcuts and, and, and that really, the memory strategies really does bring in the fun factor. Absolutely. That's and it makes them feel, things. you're right, like superstars. Mm-hmm. Like they get these new superpowers. Yeah. I had a student the other day who could not remember three words in order. And just with a couple of uh, strategies and techniques, she was able to go home later that afternoon and remind and tell her mom 12 words in order. So it's just so, and, and of course, visual visuals were, were a huge part of that. So, yes. And so recently, that's an interesting segue. Recently, um, visuals has actually become a huge um, part of my life in the last four years. Um, so, and that's, that's one of the primary uh, emphasis of uh, infocabulary is, is the reliance on the visuals and the, the 
supplying visuals to kids to help them with vocabulary. So, um, but before I get to that, I know um, I wanted to share with you a little bit about vocabulary and um, why vocabulary is so important with this population of students. You know, there's so there's the decoding and and the fluency and you know the five pillars of literacy, and vocabulary is one of them. Um, and so, if if I can help spread the word on how um, you know, and, and maybe um, share some tools that we've created that can be helpful to your audience. Um, I, I'd love that opportunity. Big time. That's, you know, that's what I feel that's one area that I'm a little bit lacking. Huh. I okay. admit where I don't really do enough vocabulary development and I know how incredibly important it is. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, I'll, I'll use online tools um, like free rice, Mm -hmm. with my students and stuff like that. And, and there are some workbooks out there, but I'm not a workbook kind of person. I know. <laughs> there, there's, there's something just mm. very stagnant mm -hmm. and not very fun about workbooks. I agree. Um, I do integrate <laughs> visualizations, but I, I personally don't do enough with vocabulary. So and, this yeah. is really important to me that we're doing this. Oh, thank you. Me, me too. So, and I, you know what? I'm, I was speech, speech language. And, and so a big piece of what we focus on is semantics in, in our field. Um, and so building vocabulary, helping kids with word retrieval skills and strategies, that's an enormous part of what we do. And the wake up call that I had four and a half years ago um, was that we have been using language to teach language. So using language definitions to teach language words to students who struggle with language. <laughs> and 64, I, it was like this epiphany that I've had. I'm like, huh. And I've been trained, you know, and so I was using best practice instruction. I was doing all of the, the you know, the, the absolute best practice um, recommendations were just part of what just came naturally to me and I was using them. And so obviously there, were, there was drawing, there was acting words out, there were all, like all those really good best practice solutions. And then I came headlong into a, into a student, an eighth grade girl who even with the 20 years of tools in my toolbox as a speech, 24, <laughs> I'm trying to do my math here, 23 years of, of tools in my toolbox, um, a week later, she told me the one and only antonym for prominent was short. And I said, oh dear, we have a problem here. And she was really struggling with comprehension. Um, and this is a girl who her nonverbal quotient, uh, you know, in, in her testing was very high and her verbal was very low. I mean, it was one of the biggest gaps I've, I've worked with. Right. And um, it really caused me to pause and say, why am I doing things this way? And I need something, clearly there needs to be something different. So my, in our journey, the last four years, um, it's had this tool that we created been available, I would have bought it and I would have been on my merry way continuing on the path. And it was, it was a powerful shift. And so now I am a CEO of an educational technology company and all that, that I know it's so exciting. So business hat and marketing hat and legal, you know, it's just, yeah. all, whole world has really, really expanded, but it was because this method worked for this one girl. And then I tried it with other students and it worked for them. And, um, and then I ran into a colleague of mine um, at, an, at a workshop on how to incorporate the iPad. The iPad had just come out, you know, not too long before that. How to incorporate the iPad into your speech language therapy. And uh, at the break, we both looked at one another and said, well, you know, these, these tools are too low for our students. You know, they're quacking ducks and good job, you know, and, oh, and, you, and yeah. you can't use no, them. No. And I'm like, our kids would not tolerate this and, and, right. and they weren't sophisticated enough. So, right. um, and, and it's great that they're, you know, early literacy tools. Some of them are fantastic. Um, you know, some of them are not, but some of them are really, really helpful. Um, and so our famous last words were, well, how hard could it be to build an app? So, <laughs> and that, that just launched everything. So the very next step was after seeing that it made a difference for Panina, um, and then my students, and then meeting my colleague who is now my business partner. Um, we went to top notch academic researchers at Johns Hopkins, at uh, University of Maryland, at University of Virginia. 
and they, because it's, it's, it's draining on your resources to pursue something that's not going to be, you know, going to be helpful. So we needed to know that there's a there there. And had we really created something that the world needs to know about, and we were strongly encouraged that we had and to move forward. Um, that's pretty empowering. It is. It was really, it was. And, and so, um, that launched us onto this adventure, um, creating in vocabulary and out of that, and in talking with these academic researchers, um, just to kind of share a little bit more about what, what we're up to, we, um, were encouraged to create an assessment tool that used the cognitive educational approach that we had created in vocabulary. And so now we have the only, vocabulary assessment that's norm referenced that looks at depth of vocabulary knowledge without taxing expressive language. I need that. Oh, yay. I, I need <laughs> it. I need it. I use it, you know, in my assessments now. And just because a lot of times you'll get a report on a student and, you know, um, maybe the, the, the whisk was done and you look at the similarities and the vocabulary scores. Um, it doesn't go in depth. And, and I don't know whether it's because they can't formulate a definition and it's an expressive language issue or they don't know the words. Right. And so now we have a tool that if you pair those two, then we can get at, Oh, you know, if they rock, you know, they're rock stars at this then, and if they're not, how, you know, what can we do to help them build the depth of vocabulary? Very, very cool. So, uh, I'm dying to get a better visualization of what this product is like and and how is it is it a workbook is it an online thing is it an app or is it everything okay good question so we have we initially built an ipad app which was a really really helpful um first step so that we got users uh, and then we went on the the national circuit and we're, we're presenting on vocabulary instruction with our new methods mm -hmm. um we created in vocabulary and word equations um, and so I'm not going to go into a lot of depth about word equations just to, to keep things a little more succinct, but it's another, it's a word equations is available only on the iPad. And that is our method for teaching verbs, uh, synonyms such as prudent, compliant, uh, prudent, uh, I'm sorry, um, such as, um, plod and meander and swagger, um, and, uh, meander. So those words are really tricky for a lot of our kids. And, um, it's a, it's a tool that has, uh, videos and it's all visually presented. Uh, so that's a, that's another one that came out of working with a student. Now how, how would you present verbs visually? Ooh, okay. I'll take the time to, to talk about it. Um, so in, uh, word equations is, was created for a student named Charlie who was struggling around, struggling in comprehension. And one day, and we weren't quite sure, and the psychoeducational didn't quite pinpoint it, my full, I don't know, 20 page language evaluation, you know, had little glitches here and there, but it didn't add up to why he was really struggling. So mm -hmm. one day we were reading the sent, and the sentence in the text was, Jane plotted home. And I said, oh, you know, I jumped in and a perfectly valid, I thought, comprehension question was, how does Jane feel? And he had no idea. He looked, his eyes got huge. <laughs> and um, he's like, well, how do I know? There's no, there's no adjective to tell me. And I said, well, okay. And I knew he could visualize. We had already established that he could, he could visualize. And I said, well, what are you picturing? And he said, well, she's walking. And I said, but walking how? No ability to get huh. that nuance. Huh. So I, you know, this is a real mathematical kid. And I said, well, okay, what if the sentence were Jane meandered home? He pictured her exactly, and he got up, and I said, well, let's model it. What does it look like? And he did the exact same walk for both of those words. So I said to myself, self, how, how are we going to reach this student here? So I reached into my bag and pulled out some Post-it notes. And so, I, you know, and on the fly, I was like, okay, well, what, does, what makes plodding plod? And it was the base word walk, and then the symbol plus, and then the, te and then the next Post-it was slowly plus and then i'm like what other feature makes plot oh heavy heat right plus, and right. then the, and then the third one was the epiphany to help him answer the comprehension question which was why would somebody be plotting what are they feeling what's their motive or their emotion and it was and then we came up with several so so tired or not wanting to do what he had you know what what he was on the way to do she was on the way to doing um, and so then equals plot 
So in the, in, and then it just grew from there and we did that. really, really like that. It's oh. really breaking it down for them, making yeah. it very concrete. It's like semantic features, right? So, so here we've, we've taken this word, made it concrete, um, given them the semantic features that they need to figure it out. So the tool word equations allows kids to build up a word, say they're writing and they have a character who's, you know, old, you know, tired, um, and they're walking, you know, or someone who is panicked and trying to get to the bus. It helps them kind of build the formula that way to arrive at a synonym. And then we hired actors to act these out. So there's over 350 videos that are really fun and, and you know, kids of all ages really, really have responded well to that. And where can you get that? Uh, that's on the, you have to go to the um, app store on the iPad. So that's for, at this point, it's an iPad only app. Um, and then we did this. So, and then one last feature about that, you can also use it as a thesaurus. So you can look at our list of videos. And so, for example, we have three videos for pace. One shows somebody pacing and then the, and then the visual definition, the formula with pictures pops up. So pacing outside of an emergency room, the formula is because he's anxious or worried. Um, then there's another one where he's pacing deep in thought and another one where he's pacing um, because he's excited about something that he's looking So you're for. getting the multiple, multiple meanings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the nuanced stuff. Which is really good for kids that are, yeah, too concrete. Exactly. You're making exactly. it concrete for those that can't go to the abstraction and walking them through the steps you on got how it. to think abstractly. Yay. Yeah. So that's exactly what... Through and, visuals. Yep. Yeah. To make it even more concrete, to take the language piece out of it. it. it, it I, yes, exactly. Yeah. Very cool. Thank Very you. Cool. So where does infocabulary in come vocabulary, from? Right. So infocabulary. In in so infocabulary, um, I can jump right into that. Did, um, why don't I just jump right into that? And uh, I think your audience understands why vocabulary is important. Um, I can, I, we can jump right into vocabulary, or do you want me to show maybe a couple of slides about how big of a deal vocabulary is for this population of kids? Show us. Show you vocabulary. Right, show us what a big deal it is, the pictures. Okay. All that, right. that, that, that sounds important. Okay. Well, let me, um, let me share my screen with you then. So this is just, I just pulled a couple of slides um, from from uh, presentations that we do nationally on vocabulary instruction, and I just think this is a really important um, concept that that we all need to be thinking about. Um, it's very easy to to think of vocabulary one dimensionally, um, and that usually is breadth. So if I have a student who can look at uh, you know four pictures is kind of a quintessential assessment for vocabulary, four pictures, and can I say the word compass and they can point to it then I believe that they know what compass is. And yet that really isn't what's, what's happening. What that tells me is that they have a breadth of, their breadth of vocabulary includes the word compass. They have enough data points to be able to indicate, oh, that's, that's a compass. But it does not mean that they understand that, um, you know, the nuances of, of a word. Okay, so just I just want to really clarify this because what our tool does really well is emphasize the depth of vocabulary instruction that we really need to be targeting with this population of kids. So um, what's what's interesting about um, uh, breadth of vocabulary is that the the research shows that early you know students who struggle with breadth of vocabulary, so like on a Peabody picture vocabulary test, for instance, mm -hmm. um, those kids early on. Uh, when they struggle with breadth of vocabulary, it it's a predictor of later decoding deficits. So that's a really helpful thing for us to know as we're working with younger students. But semantic represents, rep representations for known words is what we're talking about with depth. And that predicts later comprehension deficits. Mm -hmm. And what that's looking at is, does the student know for, you know, I'll use the compass example. Do they know that there's a magnet inside and that it has a compass rose on the face and that there's north and, you know, north and east and, mm -hmm. west, you know, south and west. And do they know that it's a camping tool, um, that it's associated with GPS, those kinds of things. Right. So not until somebody really owns on a deep level the facets of a word, do we consider them to have a depth of understanding of that word? Mm -hmm. And you will get tripped up in your comprehension if you have a limited 
if, if the scope of understanding of a word is very limited, you will struggle with your comprehension. So it's just, it. yeah, it's huge. Okay. So then um, just another uh, t- uh, tagging with that, there are two phases to vocabulary development. There's the fast mapping and that's that early, you know, uh, a student learns the word dog. They see, you know, they have a dog in their home. It has four legs, a, a wagging tail, fur, and then they go into a, f- you know, they drive by a field and there's a cow. And what do they call the cow? dog, right? Or goggy. Um, right. And so they're, they're kind of over generalizing at this phase or they're under generalizing. Right. So it's a very surface understanding. And a lot of our kids, um, if they're, if they're not getting, if they're not accessing literature, they're not accessing all of the nuances of a word's meaning so that they, so they have kind of this over generalization or this under generalization that's happening. And it's not until and then this is our picture for extended mapping. And yeah. so now we're talking about, oh, this is a, you know, this word relates this way to all the other words neurologically that we have stored in our minds. It, it, it kind of reminds me of the brain and those looks like the neural pathways. So yeah. you're helping them to create those connections. Links. Absolutely. Yep. Um, and so I will just do one more thing and then I promise I'm going to stop this part and I'm going to jump right into the product. This is good. This is important. People have to understand this stuff. It's great. Yeah. It's because you know what, we're so busy and we have these, we have these kids who have complicated profiles and there's so much to do, right? So all of the phonemic awareness and the, you know, orthography and there's so much to do. I just want to be the ambassador for, you know, this is really, really important too. And so we have to find the time to, to squeeze it in. Well, um, and, and, you know, vocabulary, the word vocabulary is a very surface concept and people take it too literally and they don't know the depth, just like you're talking about here. So you're going into yeah. the depth of vocabulary and we need that. Oh, good. Well, I'm glad to be helpful. So th- that's um, what kind of um, a lot of people think that if they give students a vocabulary list or put them in a workbook, that they will learn words. And um, what we've learned, and I, I'm going to share just one one quick slide on some research, independent research was done at University of Virginia comparing business as usual instruction, most, most of which was language-based and um, provided kids with definitions. And they broke the language. So there was some actual good instruction going on, right. uh, in particular with one of the teachers. Um, but these were the results that came out of it. Um, so uh, Dr. Michael Kennedy did, did a six-week study. It's a small study. There's a much larger study happening this fall with um, University of Virginia and Vanderbilt um, and uh, Rhode Island. So, so it's kind of exciting to have these academic research researchers and, and it's completely independent, which is what we love as, as, you know, scientists and, and, um, you know, we want to know that this, that this is helpful. Right. Um, so what, what they found was the teachers alternated using their best, um, their best, you know, their, their own approach to teaching vocabulary within vocabulary. So all of the kids in the study got three weeks of both. Um, and every single week, the students who had learned using in vocabulary um, were, were far more efficient and better at two components that were in the quizzes. So both sets of kids each week did perfectly fine on the multiple choice, can you circle the correct definition? And that's, that's the scratching the surface that is being used as our, our way of determining whether kids know words all across this country. So kids okay. learn their vocabulary words. They take the quiz on Friday. The teacher asks them, can you, you know, fill in the blank or can you give the definition? And then we think they know it. Mm-hmm. And what, I, what I'm excited about with this is that the, the difference between the two scores is statistically very significant. Yeah. And the two components that, they're, that, that um, this added up to is these other two features, which were, here are eight new images that you did not see during instruction circle all of the images that show prudent. Ooh. And then each week, the ki- right, so they were able to extrapolate their understanding from what they had learned and, and um, apply it to novel examples. That's so Very cool. Yeah, in the picture realm. Then this was the part, you know, and we weren't sure how this was going to turn out, but the, the even more exciting piece was that um, they were able to apply it in language context as well. So here are six sentences that are using the word prudent. Which ones are using prudent appropriately? 
Ooh. Yeah. So that was really exciting. So, um, and then in the wow. fall, we're looking at some, some bigger comprehension, um, you know, um, you know, I imagine this would be a really great tool for kids to prepare for standardized tests like the SATs and the ACTs. I think so. Yeah. We, and I, we have, I have a couple of kids on my caseload where we've absolutely been using it that way. So, um, without further ado, <laughs> so that was all the build up. Um, I'd like to share with you in vocabulary. So it's, it's really an easy website to find. It's a web-based um, device agnostic tool. So we began with um, the iPad version and immediately got customers, um, but it was very limited. We only had 100 words on each of uh, on the iPad. And then we got requests for higher level words, like you were just talking about the, the SAT, GRE, you know, like the right. those level of words and lower level words and words for kids who are learning English. Um, and so we built three iPad apps and then we realized, you know what, we need to, it, that's when we learned a lot about business. We started winning some business plan competitions and some funding. And so once we got the funding, we were able to build this much more robust tool uh, that's uh, at infercabulary, I-N-F-E-R-C-A-B-U-L-A-R-Y.com. Um, and it's web device, uh, web, web-based, but it can, it, you can use it on your phone, you can use it on an iPad, on a Kindle, any device. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. So that just makes, it just makes it so much more accessible. We yeah. also have about 2000 words in the system already. Um, and word lessons. And we've gamified it, and there, um, the teachers and, and tutors and academic therapists have access to reports, so we can know exactly which words our students are working on, which ones they're struggling with. Mm. Um, yeah, so we're really, really excited to share this, and we just, um, we just released this in, in January. So we've what a great thing to have some yeah. of my students do over the summer. Yes, prevent the summer slide, the summer slump. Yep. Oh, and, uh, that's good. Yeah, that's how a lot, actually, that's how a lot of, um, so we have some schools using it, and that's exactly what they're doing with it over the summer. And, and we've had some real success, um, you know, reported from teachers perspective that um, probably my favorite anecdote was two, two favorite anecdotes, if I can, before we before we launch it. One was a fifth grade teacher who said she's never, it's always been vocabulary instruction over here. And then they would do a read aloud. Uh, they were reading aloud number the stars. And, um, she said she couldn't believe it because, you know, it's always been vocabulary over here and story over here. And this, the, a week after they, she had initiated using it vocabulary and assigning it for homework. She had three of her students like literally falling out of their chairs. I learned that word. And, and, be, and then being able to have the conversation of, okay, well, what do you remember? What do you visualize? And how does it, how does it change in this context? And she, she was just blown away. I'm so excited, so excited that you're using the term visualize because it's, to me, visualization is the secret weapon in education. I and agree. We're not teaching it. If yeah. I had my own school, I'd spend a year teaching visualization to mastery before I even started reading and I, reading and math. I couldn't agree with you more. It's so important. And you, you would, it's, it's mind blowing. And I'm not sure everybody knows this. It's mind blowing that there are kids who are struggling and struggling. They have never gotten a picture in their head. They just oh, don't know how. Yeah. Well, I, I do that all the time in my, in my practice. Me too. Me too. And, um, yeah. I'll have to, we'll talk, so I have to share with you one of my products, um, oh, my great. products that teach visualization, and I have a whole series of games that do that, but um, it's, it's really quite remarkable how, what profound changes you can see in kids when you open up that capacity, because there are a ton of kids out there that have what I call a blind mind's eye, Yes, and yes. They, now they, or they may be able to visualize but um, they never thought of applying it to academics. You got it. It's like, it's or to like reading. They, they just, yeah, it's like opening the door to them. Of, it's like, I have a lot of students who believe that listening is a passive sport, <laughs> you know, and it's not until you do all of these metacognitive strategies with them that the light bulb goes, oh, I need to be engaged and actively visualize and pulling out the main ideas and, and repeating keywords to hold, you know, for right. working memory. Yeah. Because it, it helps you to sustain attention. Yep. Well, I, I, what I often say to my kids, imagine going to a movie with your eyes closed. Oh, that's a 
good. Oh, that's, man, that's a really that's good metaphor. What, that's what's happening to readers that don't visualize. Yep. They're, they're, you know, reading with their mind, mind's eye closed. And that's yep. why they hate reading. But I've, yep. I've noticed a pattern. Every student I've ever had that hated to read, they were not visualizing. I see that. I Boom. could not agree more. Yep. And you know, maybe it takes six months, maybe it takes a year, maybe it takes them a couple years, depending on what, like how hard, how difficult that is. Those are the kids who they're like, Oh my gosh, I like reading now. And it, it just, you've just opened up and changed a, a child's entire life with that. Yeah. I had know yep. so many kids that have worked on reading comprehension for years and no yep. one's even mentioned, yep. no one's mentioned visualization. I'm like, yep. what? I know, I know. And, and, you know, so much of visualization is your back, your background knowledge too. And so that's another piece that the, the academic, you know, researchers have, have shared with us, you know, cause again, I didn't go into this saying, I'm going to make this product that does this, this, and this. I had a student in front of me who couldn't do it. And so we yes. created something and then now we're being, you know, we're kind of being guided into realizing what we've done. And so, you know, we've, we've talked with, you know, the co-author of the Woodcock Johnson and he's, you know, a, a cognitive, um, you know, he, he runs the KTEL Horn, KTEL Horn um, consortium. And he um, was very, very encouraging that this is something that's, that's very unique. And, um, and so semantic reasoning is what we're asking kids to access uh, to help them learn vocabulary. Because if they don't have, if when you're reading a word and you, and you run into, um, you know, the compliant, the compliant dog um, lay, you know, lay down. Well, if you don't know what compliant, if you don't, if you can't pull up some imagery of compliance and what that means, you're not, you're not going to get through that sentence and comprehend it. And then when somebody asks you a comprehension question, especially about motive or emotion, you're just not going to be able to do it. So I so can see the benefits to kids with nonverbal learning disabilities too. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, so that, that, that have difficulty inferring the yeah. social emotional piece. Yes. So, I mean, you're, you're hitting, you're actually hitting so many, I mean, everybody kind of needs this. Okay. It really should be implemented into, into education. I feel like I've been torturing people, not showing you. Okay. So here, I'm just going to go, I'm just going to go. go and show you. <laughs> okay. So, um, what we've built is, um, and, th and this is kind of a fun story. So we've built, uh, a mountain climbing theme and it's high from the students we've interviewed and the reports that we're getting from teachers and parents, they're highly motivated by this. So you're, you're attempting to climb up a mountain in chunks in specific climbs. And each of these is a different, slightly different kind of climb. Um, and you need carabiners, which are kind of your, and we, we have a whole video introducing kids to the language and the vocabulary that's included in, in our tool. So a carabiner and there's a picture of it. And, but anyway, you're trying to earn carabiners so that you can success navigate a climb without falling. Um, and you, you do that, you earn your carabiners in base camp and then you climb and you climb here. So why, why do you call it carabiners? Uh, well, cause that's what mountain climbers use. That's a tool. That's that, uh, like it's a, it's a tool that they use to keep their rope attached. Oh, ah, okay. Yeah. And, and, and that's what I was saying. I was aware of that vocabulary well, word. Now you have it. Uh, and probably, I'm going to visualize it. <laughs> yeah, and I, I did a little gesture for you. You know, you know, those metal devices that open. Right, and right. right. That, that did it. Keychains. Sometimes people use them as keychains. Those are carabiners. So anyway, there, like I said, there's a video kind of guiding kids through. Here are the tools you're going to need to be a mountain climber and base camp and, and like explaining all of the, the concepts. Awesome. Okay. Got it. So I'm going to jump right into, because this is what is the essence of semantic reasoning. And that's what this is all about, semantic reasoning. So what we've created is a tool that uses semantic reasoning, which is a, a, a term that we coined to explain asking people to look at multiple examples of a word and then attach that concept that goes with all of them with, the, with a single word. So it, it, it may look like a PPVT kind of scenario where, oh, there's four pictures and we're also kind of trained to be like, okay, where's the right picture? That's not at all what we're doing. We're asking you to engage in critical thinking using, using higher order reasoning, which is at you know, the top of Bloom's taxonomy and not rote memorization in order to get there. So we've kind of turned Bloom's taxonomy kind of a little bit on its head saying, why don't we use critical thinking? 
I love it. And it's, it's analytical too. Yes. Okay. Visually, so. visual analytics. Ooh, I'm going to need, we'll have to talk offline because you, you're, you've already had some really amazing ways of kind of reframing and, and just um, helping, helping me learn more about how to explain this to people. So I appreciate that. Sure. I'm going to unplug my head, my headset. One of the things from day one that we knew that we needed was for everything to be audio supported for our kids who struggle in the decoding area. So as soon as the four pictures pop up, um, tense, absence, hideous, absolutely. So everything is everything's audio presented that they're able to replay as many times as they need. And so what we're asking them to do is visually look at the components and pull from that. And so. Um, then what we're using, so we're not anti-language, we're speech language pathologists, we're all in literacy for a reason, we love language. It's just, it's not the primary modality for learning. We're asking you to kind of engage in a different, you know, a different method of getting the language in. And then we use language to scaffold. So if a student isn't quite sure, um, and, and so when you brought up the non, you know, students with nonverbal learning disabilities, you know, kids who are in the, on the spectrum, love it, this. It actually be a little tricky for them, but it, it's totally to use to help them develop those skills. So what's going on? Because, you know, some of my kids might be noticing his knuckles instead of this, you know, so, so there might be a little bit more scaffolding that needs to go along if this is used with, with students who have, um, you know, those, those areas of deficit. Um, but now where did that last puzzle piece go? Our friend could not join us for bowling today. The loss of a loved one is very sad. Looks like she's running late. And then you have the ability to show all the captions. And what we have, um, we have some video of a, of a teacher who's using this, um, who's using this in the classroom. And what she has her students do is um, she'll show the captions and then ask them to pull out the word or phrases in each of the captions that are going to help guide them in their, in their ability to give a definition. Okay, so then the student would say, oh, I learned, you know, it's this one. A situation in which... Oh, some this is fun. And then it's almost like the definition is your prize for you having figured out the definition yourself. Vestibule. <laughs> shred. Distil I like... Acquaintance. I that? like how there are four pictures, too. You know, I, you know, instead of just a single one, that's, that's, well, that's, cool. so that's, that's absolutely critical for semantic reasoning. So, so the, the definition of semantic reasoning is you see or expose, you could even do it with, with, you know, sentences, but that is, that's the essence of semantic reasoning. It wouldn't be semantic reasoning if it were one picture. We're saying here are four things that are related with a common thread. Use your critical thinking to analyze it you figure out what the common thread is, and then the last act is attach that to a word. And so what's happening here is maybe the student, yeah. What I love about this is, to me, some of them are more obvious than other ones. Like the last one when I was looking at it, the kid with the missing puzzle piece, I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't seeing the connection to, that, to the word immediately, but it forced me to kind of really analyze the image in more depth. And, and then, of course, then when the words came up, it provided a more concrete clue. Exactly. It's, it's very cool. This is very deep. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, we're, it, it, this is what, deep work here. Thank you. Yeah, we're really excited about it. And um, um, yep, so thank you. I, so it, is this, it, it, do you buy individual memberships for each student or can you get school memberships or practice memberships? Yeah, so I, I'll, I'll come back to the, um, I'll come back to the base, the base camp mode, which is the other method um, after an, I'll answer your question here. Yeah, sorry, that was, that no, was no, not that's the fine. best uh, time to ask that oh, question. Totally fine. Was, um, so, so pricing, it's really reasonable. So we have um, pricing for specialists and it's based on about $7.50 uh, a student per year um, for schools. That's what, that's what the schools are doing. And then obviously with, you know, a 10,000 student school, we, we, you know, go down from there. Well, for specialists, um, it's, it's a really reasonable, you know, in the $6, 650 range um, for students per year. And then parents, we have a, um, you know, uh, actually 
we're going to be bringing this down just a tiny bit. So it'll be $96 for parents. So, so as an academic therapist, um, you know, or a speech language pathologist or a tutor, you know, who, um, it's something that either you can have for your practice if you're working on um, vocabulary with a lot of different students, or you can recommend that the parents get it. And they're, they're happy to spend $10 a month to, to have right. their vocabulary. Cheaper than the sessions. But the other thing, yeah. is, well, do you offer an affiliate program? Um, tell me what you mean. An affiliate program meaning that if the uh, if a learning specialist recommended it to the parent and gave them a special link that they would get maybe. Uh, you know, what? we haven't we haven't um, we haven't discussed that, but um, but we'd be happy to to consider that. Um, but for your audience, we will be providing a thirty percent discount. So um, and they'll they would input in the when they get to that code um, the go your go dyslexia um, will be the discount for that. So for anybody who wants okay, to purchase that, yeah, yeah, that's that's fabulous. Okay, so back to this part. So that's the climb mode. That's the assessment mode. That's where we're looking at how well did the kids learn or, you know, the students. And we've got adults using this as well. Um, the, the vocabulary is, gets pretty sophisticated. We get up into the 12th grade vocabulary range um, and all the way down to right. you know, ba very basic. So here's, here's distinct. It just happened to come up on the demo mode. Distinct just happened to come up um, as our... Um, I'm just going to go back because we already looked at that one. Okay, here's wedged. Mm. So just oh. get thinking about... Oh, it's fun. It is it's fun. just that's fun. And I'm, I'm enjoying your pictures, too. Thank you. It's, that's the, that's, that is How been a fun... How did Rock to get itself into that small space? Bah. My head's oh. not in this fence. I can't believe my daughter crashed my car and now it's stuck between these walls. This frosted leaf got stuck between two wood boards. I'm stuck between a rock and a hard place. I'll just sit right here in the middle of this tree and wait for mom. So it's kind of a combination of set of um, captions that give away what the word is. And we're, at, we're um, in the process of building another feature that I'll tell you about in just a second. So what we're, um, what is great for an educator while they're working with the student is let's go back and find the words that kind yeah. of keep repeating. So we're not telling you what the word is ahead of time. You're engaged in trying to figure that out. And we have oftentimes in the captions, there are words that will help you come up with your own definition, which is a best practice, you know, kid-friendly definitions and active engagement. Those are two of the top best practice vocabulary instruction, and we have that built in here and visual. The other thing that I love about it is that some of them are more concrete than others. Yes. <laughs> so you're so stuck is a synonym. Yes. Whereas exactly. the last one, there is no direct synonym. Yes. It's more, it's more of an abstract idea. Exactly. So, so you're combining mm -hmm. kind of scaffolding the abstract and the concrete ideas well, within one word to help them to make those connections. I'm having so much fun talking to you because you're picking up on nuances that, um, that that's awesome. Yep. Exactly. Love it. And then the, the component we're building now is before they even get to the view definition, we will have a preliminary, um, a multiple choice uh, activity where they'll, they will be able to earn some additional things that they need on their climb. So right now, if you, if you um, don't pass the climb, which is the one that I showed before, um, if you miss a couple of words, you don't make that climb. You can use a carabiner to kind of save your life. But if you, if you um, don't pass the two climbs, it, it tells you, oh, you, you know, you've, you've fallen twice and you need to go to the medical tent, which is this, which is you need to go back to learning the words in the first place and then come back to the testing mode um, after you've done that. So, um, but we've made it fun. So it's like, oh, you, you've run into an icy wall. You need, an, you need to go earn an ice pick. And so this is where you're earning the fun, you know, oh, you need a thermal blanket. It's, you know, minus 20 degrees. And, um, you know, you, uh, you, you know, you want to post on, um, you want to post on Instagram. So you need a, you know, you're, you need a drone that's going to take your, you know, take picture anyway. So we've, we've made it fun. But when you were saying it's fun, this is, this is the exciting part to us is that the kids like that part of it. They like the climb. They like the motivation. They like to, you know, talk to their peers about, Hey, I just mastered another mountain. 
But what's been amazing is that they actually like doing it. They like engaging and learning these words. I, I, I like them. this. I really, really like this. Yay. I'm blown away. I'm Thank all you. over this. Thank you. So before they get to the definition, they're going to have to do a multiple choice and they'll be able to earn these, these other devices to help them in their climb. So it'll be wedged. Describes a, uh, describes a you know, uh, people or, you know, um, objects or objects or animals, something that is stuck, something that is stuck or, and then the other two choices will be for, you know, foil choices. So yet again, there's this active engagement that they have to engage in before. No, you can't do this passively. That's what I love. Yes. (laughs) It doesn't work. So, yep. That is, um, that's the process. And then I can quickly show you the dashboard. So for anyone who's interested in, in, you know, purchasing this, here's what it looks like, um, from, from the teacher view. Uh, and so you have access to all of the words in our system. And, um, we added a level zero because, um, you know, some of these words are not really kindergarten words. They're, they're more appropriate for like English language learners. Um, but if this, you, you, this is the part I'm probably the most excited about. So as I, as I add a student to the system, I, as I'm adding them, I will choose a grade level. And so all of our words are uh, on grade levels using two different um, established systems for assigning grade levels for vocabulary words. Um, and then on top of that, so let's say my student is in sixth grade and I've assigned them sixth grade words in the system. They can start playing, you know, that day and learning sixth grade vocabulary words. Those will come up in there, in there, um, specifically for them. If I have, um, as a teacher, if I'm a classroom teacher and I have a couple of kids who are more advanced, I can assign them seventh grade. So the differentiation is there. Every student can be assigned specific words based on grade level. And then this is the part you're going to love. So, okay, I've assigned my, my sixth grader, sixth grade words, and then I'm teaching um, the giver. On top of the sixth grade words, <gasps> so author, there are 184 words in our system that are contained in the giver, and we have what chapter they first, that word first popped up in. Wow. So now imagine you're probably adding more books yep, all the will. time. Yes, we and, are. And we so, have people, so, people could rec- so people could send you an email and how yep. long would it take for you to get that book up Our on? Our turnaround time is about three weeks at this that's point. That's great. So, yes. Yeah. Yep. So that's exactly, you have it exactly. Wow. Right. Only three yep. weeks. Yep. So, Yay. That's awesome. so, yeah. So what we've been doing is as we've had more customers and we've had more people, it's, we, you know what, working with kids, you have to have a collaborative attitude and we, you know, we've, we've created this really cool thing, but we haven't solved, you know, we don't have every word in the system. Now, the caveat to that is that this is not, this is never meant to be a panacea, right? This is, this is one method and it's one tool that we think is really, really cool. But you, we can't teach words like, um, oh, you know, there've been a few times where we've had words that we tried to do this way and they, they just, it, they're just really, really abstract and it's just confusing. So, so nouns, adjectives, and adverbs is how, those are the words that we focus on here. Word equations, the one I mentioned earlier, that's, the, that's how we handle verbs. Um, and it is our plan to um, upgrade and make word equations even more robust so that it's also on this kind of a platform that's web-based and device yes, agnostic, please. right? Yeah. So, so nouns, adjectives, adverbs, if people send us their vocabulary lists, we use our, um, like a lot of times, um, you know, teachers aren't always 100% sure what words are worth teaching. Um, and so we give them absolute feedback on, you know, I don't know, 60% of the words on your list are, are imageable, uh, and therefore accept, you know, we can, we can definitely put them in there and cross reference, um, cross reference words. And then we also cross reference the words in that book with words that we have that maybe they didn't think of to have on their vocabulary list. And then that gives the teacher the ability to go through and say, Ooh, I want my student to learn exasperated, um, jarred, 
And um, let's see here. Now, do you do that by, for each student or can you do a whole group of kids? You can do a whole group of kids. <gasps> Absolutely. Yes. Yep. Rock on. Yeah. So for example, <laughs> if, I'm, if I'm seeing the word burden and I want to see what will that look like to my students, I can use these two buttons. So this will show me what it will look like in base camp and this will show me what the, um, what the climb will look like. So burden. Wow. 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 <laughs> so, so no, burden, you know, burden. I do it. It's fun. Okay. <laughs> yes. it, it is fun. Okay. So then, this could be a great form of cognitive remediation after, if someone after, had a head injury. Yes. Yep. And that's what, at, when we were presenting it at the American Speech Hearing Association, that's, we were getting a lot of requests from speech pathologists who work with that, that population. And wow. that, that elderly. Uh, yes. Elderly. Just keeping, you know? keeping people sharp. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So I'm going to clear my filters and then I'll just show you, um, you know, I showed you some of these more like lower level words and what's really helpful with these lower level words. Um, we're working with a couple of, um, you know, early childhood, um, organizations and, um, you know, kids who, kids who come from lower socioeconomic, uh, status, um, don't have access to the nuances and don't have, you know, the, the whole 30 million word gap, you know, these are kids by, by age three, just by, just based on socioeconomic status can be yeah. completely behind, um, the age. They're not exposed the to the, you know, their parents may not have a breadth of vocabulary. They're just yep. not exposed to as many words. Exactly. And so then what does that do over time? That decreases your background knowledge. And so even though we have, you know, you know, the word butterfly, a student may have encountered one picture of a butterfly and think that's, and again, back to that, that slide that I showed on, um, breadth and depth, um, sorry, on the, um, fast mapping, they may only have one image in their head for what a butterfly is. And by seeing this, it, it. Opens oh, I up, love that. Right? I love that. Oh my gosh. And they're beautiful images. Oh, thank you. Yeah. We're really, we're really proud of that. And then um, one other thing is that you can see that there's a category uh, list here. So I could choose the word by grade level. I could choose the word by book. And then oh. I could also choose the word by category. So if I'm doing, a, let's say I'm doing an emotion, you know, I'm working with a student up for, on emotion language. <gasps> um, yeah. Okay. So we have- wow. You're blowing my mind. You guys have worked really hard. Yeah, we have. We're, we're this excited. is this is really comprehensive, really dynamic, really wow. Thank you. I'm I'm, I'm totally getting a membership today. Oh, awesome! Great. Well, we'll get you that thirty percent discount. <laughs> you know it. Awesome. So yeah, you know, dumbfounded and exasperated, and then it also tells you like where you know in the word the the books that we have in our system where Rufal is going to is going to show up. You are, you're, you're, you're just taking an enormous load off the teachers and you're providing this just really robust and, you know, something that you've also done the research on. So it's validated. Yeah. It's a validated approach to, yeah. to building semantic reasoning. I love that term, semantic reasoning. That really works for me because that is so important. To me, that is one of the foundations of learning. That's it's right weird. up there with visualization. Yay. It's, it's really, 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 really important. This is great. Thank you. There's, there's one final way that, um, that the teacher, you can look for words. And this is probably my most common way of having it. I have this, I have a lot of tools in my toolboxes, you know, like my shelves are covered with uh, really awesome I, materials. I, 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 have, I have subscriptions to a bunch of different things and I'm, I'm really excited to look um, at your visualization tools and add that to my system, you know, to, to all the things I have. Um, I keep this open and, and yes, I made it, but I also, I use, I made it because I needed to use it. And so I do use it every single day. I, um, so maybe the kids are working on a novel and so we'll go in and, and, and work that way. But I just keep this open on my desktop all the time. And as a student comes in, if they bring in some text that they need to read before, what would happen is we'd run into a word and it would completely put the brakes on their comprehension. We do a deep, you know, and then I would do a deep dive on what that word means. And then you can end up going down a rabbit hole and then you get back and their working memory is like, I don't even know what, like I was reading a book really. <laughs> so, so I was, you know, 
And you, of course, when you run into vocabulary words, you have to choose which ones to focus on and which ones to just kind of say, okay, that means this, and you move right along. But when I would do that, it would it would it was taking way too long. And so now, if I have a student and I um, and obviously we don't have every word in the English language in here, um, but if if we run into say prominent, I can just type in the first few letters and oh, they have it. Nice. It's, it's literally this fast. That's really good. You know, the other thing it, you're because you you always reflect back on students because all of my students are the ones that inspire my products too. I mm-hmm. have a student that I was working with yesterday who actually has a pretty decent vocabulary, but when it comes to history, huh. he tanks. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm so surprised, just has like almost no vocabulary when it comes to history. Right. Do you, are you going to expand and make it more subject-based? Yeah, so we have been doing some of that. So initially, you know, the the recommendations for English language arts teachers and, um, you know, for those, for for people who are kind of tasked with with expanding kids' vocabulary in schools, um, the recommendations have been to focus on, you know, there's a bunch of different ways of of labeling words, but one of the popular ones right now is, is tier one, tier two, and tier three, uh, the Isabella Beck um, and McCown you know, method. Um, and so tier two words are words that will um, increase the student's ability to comprehend nuance and to communicate nuanced meanings and words that will show up over and over again. Those are the words that we're kind of being encouraged to emphasize. So initially in our tool, we wanted to make sure these, you know, you can see the word prominent and, and we don't even have, ha- you know, we, we probably have a tenth of the, the, the books in here that, that we'll eventually have. Um, and you can see that word comes up over and over. And this is just one, the first chapter that it, that it shows up in the giver and scarlet level letter and a tree grows and books like. So our, our focus has been on these tier two words that are showing up over and over again. And then we've added some tier one words for those, for that population of kids who really need um, background knowledge development, who don't have English as a, you know, as their primary language. Right. And then tier three words as well for teaching. So we have a whole bunch in here on health. Um, and we do have some science and some social studies. The issue with that, and I had talked a little bit about this earlier, is that it has to be a word that's easily imageable. Um, and so we do have words in here that, um, are a little, where the pictures are a little more abstract and then you end up relying on those, um, those uh, caption clues to, to right, get right, right, right. And then there are words where even like it would just be such a huge stretch that it's not really fair. <laughs> right. So, so like, you know, could you, yeah. could you image like ratify or um, I'm thinking history wise or imperialism? Yeah. So imper- so certain words, absolutely. They make sense. And we have, we, we're building that. So in, in science, um, so we could go into, I'm going to clear my filters. We could go into, um, health. And so this was a school um, where the health teacher just fell in love with using this. And so she gave us her list of, I don't know, a hundred terms and we were able to do. Oh, that's right. I could give you a list of, of if I right. gave you time, I could give you a list of terms. So yeah. if I was a history teacher, I could yep. give you a list of terms and boom. Yep. Yeah. So here's like transmission. Yes. Organization, psychological addiction, you know, but oh, we, this you know, is so good. Scourge salubrious, you know, pestilence, bilious. So, um, as I was saying, I need to do this. <laughs> there were some of those words that I wasn't sure about. So well, I know along the way, there've been a few, I, words bet, I bet you've here. been just by creating this, yeah. you've been expanding your semantic reasoning. Absolutely. For sure. So one last thing, and that is what does it look like if I want to see what, um, you know, how my student is doing? Okay. So this is an example of a student who doesn't have any struggling words. Um, they're progressing with 28 words and they've learned 13. And I'll talk more about what that means. So the system has an algorithm. I'm starting with the learned words. The system has an algorithm. So there's a certain number of points that you earn or fractions of, of points that you earn when you're in the base camp mode. And then, um, and then when you're in climb. And so you have to get to a certain number before the system says that you've learned it. So you, so there's also that whole, one of the best practice, um, instruction um, requirements is also re- repetitive, repetitious, and spaced, spaced learning. 
So um, the student will see a word and they'll get it again and then they'll get it again and then it's considered learned and then it gets put into this other category of words that will pop back up as they're going along, um, but not be kind of as in their face so that they can learn new words and kind of go from there. So you're never, you're never stopping learning words that you've learned. It's just that they, they pop up with less frequency. So here in this report, I can see that there's a timestamp. So I can see, did they do their homework? How much, how much time did they spend on it? Um, did they, did they learn it? Um, and then I can look at the words they're progressing with. And then, so I could just do a quick, wow. you know, jump in here and say, oh, okay. So, um, Ooh, I want to pick, um, anxious and, uh, drain and just, you know, do, do a quick activity where I really, um, I ask them to use expressive, you know, those words expressively, or we talk about, um, and we don't have this in the system yet. We have all kinds of plans to expand this and make it even with morphology and activities and expressive. So at this point, there's, you know, those are the pieces that we have to rely on the teachers uh, and the educators to help the students with. Um, so, you know, having a student use this as a verb, you know, it's draining, um, versus the drain, you know? So, so like I said, remember this is, we don't have verbs in our system. This is the So noun. the bottom line is this is only getting better. It's only going to keep getting better. Exactly. Woo. And then here's, here's a detailed progress report. You can print it out and send it home with the, with the parents, uh, to the parents and they can see what, um, you know, how, how the student's doing on their vocabulary. It's, it's funny. One of the words was dyslexic. I did. <laughs> yeah. That was because, um, that was because of, um, oh, which book was it? Mm, I'm blanking on what it was, but that was one of the one of the words that that, that was in one in of the several, books in several of them. It's so, mm-hmm. funny. Yep. Um, wow, I'm I'm loving this. Thank you. It's been it's been a um, it's been a huge undertaking, and um, you know I'm now I'm now full time working for the for the company, and um, I'm continuing to work with a few students. Uh, because that's where all your great, you know, inspiration, your inspiration comes from. Um, but it's, it's been, yeah, 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 you have to, you have to stay in it. And that's what, you know, that's what I didn't get into this to be an educational technology company owner. I, it, it started with one student, you know, so, so we're just so, so hopeful that more kids can be reached and can, can learn and, and be helped with this. And that will make us, um, you know, just, be, be really, really happy about, about what well, we're Well, you're reforming education, and I know far too well that you can't change education on the inside. You have to set an example on the outside. Ooh, yeah. Turn the heads. and That's, that's powerful. That's, that's powerful. Cool. Yeah. I am just so excited about this, and thank you for being so persistent with me. Oh, my pleasure. we had planned on doing this in the fall, I, the late been fall, that long? <laughs> that and long? Um, uh, I got I, I was I was ill, and you stayed in touch with me, and I'm feeling better now. And I'm and, so uh, grateful. Like I like I said to you, it's you know you've got some really really important work to do on this planet, and I'm glad you're healthy and back to it. And me too. And yeah. and uh, you're you're a kindred spirit. You're yeah. a soul sister. I'm loving it. And yeah. uh, so we need to stay in touch, and we'll talk a little bit after this because I. I have like a thousand things like floating in my head right now. Awesome. But uh, so thank you so much for joining us. Thank I know you. that everybody is going to get so much out of this. And uh, I want to encourage everybody to go and purchase this. It's a screaming deal. And um, you've really done the work. And uh, I'm very grateful. Well, that means a, a lot to us um, with your expertise and your background and your knowledge base that it means an enormous amount to us that, that you would, um, that, you know, you're saying those things. Ah, oh, I totally believe it. All right. Well, thank you so much, Beth. All right. Thanks so much. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Thank you for tuning in to the Go Dyslexia podcast, where dyslexia experts share strategies, technology, products, stories, and more. If you need the show notes or want to check out the webinars, blog posts, and resources, go to GoDyslexia.com. Be sure to sign up for Dr. Warren's newsletter and follower on social media.